Good evening, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, I acknowledge that we meet on the lands of the Wurundjeri people and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Uh, I acknowledge that this land is stolen and that sovereignty was never ceded. And I encourage members of parliament who we have in our audience tonight to work towards treaty, reparations and stolen generations compensation. I'm Nina Valens, uh, and I am here for the Victorian Women's Guild, which is a collective of women which was recently formed to promote women's rights and concerns in the state. Thank you all for coming. We have a diverse group of people here, members of parliament, media, feminists, women's libbers, um, and people who probably have come here expecting to oppose what we have to say. Uh, and it's great that everyone is here committed to respectful discussion on such a difficult topic. Thank you for coming. We're very excited to bring you this talk. We've had a lot of people very keen um, to hear this and lots of emails from people saying um, how grateful they are that we're having this discussion about the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Amendment Bill. We'll hear from our speakers first, they each have 10 minutes to speak, and during that time you will be able to email to an address, um, to this address, uh, your questions, and they will be compiled and then sent through to me, a sort of balanced selection of questions will be sent through to me to pose at the end, we'll have 15 minutes for questions. Currently the law in Victoria um, says that uh, if you want to change the sex which is recorded on your birth certificate, you must have lived in Victoria for 12 months and you need statutory declarations from two medical professionals testifying that you have undergone sex reassignment surgery, so very, very invasive surgery. This bill which is before Parliament at the moment, if passed, would allow people to change the sex which is recorded on their birth certificate on the basis of a simple statutory declaration saying that they believe their sex to be as nominated. An adult would also need a supporting statement from someone who has known them for at least 12 months. Children uh, would need their adults to apply on their behalf and they need a supporting statement from either a doctor, a psychologist or someone from an undefined, registered, uh, prescribed class of persons. There are also extra requirements for people who are prisoners, parolees, uh, and persons on the serious and sex offenders registers if they want to change the sex which is recorded on their birth certificate. A person can change their sex descriptor to anything, as long as it is not offensive or obscene, too long, a symbol, and can be reasonably established by repute or usage. So what does this mean? What are the direct and practical implications of someone being able to change the recorded sex on their birth certificate on the basis of a simple statutory declaration? And if we understand the law as a codification of society's moral values, what implications does this have for how society understands sex and gender? To address these questions and more, we have Dr Holly Lawford-Smith, a senior lecturer in political philosophy at Melbourne University, Hayden Opie, AM, senior fellow in the Melbourne Law School and a member of the Court of Arbitration of Sport, Virginia Mansell Lees, who is a lecturer in the Department of Social Work and Social Policy at La Trobe University, Aubrey Wodonga, and Bronwyn Winter, a lesbian feminist activist and academic, and the Deputy Director of European Studies at the University of Sydney. Thank you. We'll hear from colleagues. 